Hey guys, so today we're doing one of my favorite activities in Singapore, uh, which is having a hit at the Marina Bay Golf Driving Range. It's a public facility um, and it's open from quite early in the morning until quite late at night. I think they shut off the lights at 11 p.m. So the time now is just approaching 6 p.m. And um, normally I would get there from home uh, by taxi or by grab. Uh, but I've recently found out that another good way to get there is by bus. Um, albeit it doesn't drop you right in front, so you have to walk quite a bit. But it's a good way to kind of save some money and also get some exercise. Uh, from the bus stop which I got off at, it's about maybe a kilometer on foot. Um, and you just need to cross um, using one of the highways. So as you can see, it's just right, right behind you. And uh, normally at this time of the year, um, you'd see all the preparations well underway uh, for the Singapore Grand Prix, the Formula One. Um, and obviously this is not a normal year. Um, and so there are no street lights or anything, but you can still see kind of the markings for the track. Yeah, so 2020, you won't see any of the um, super fast cars roaring around the Marina Bay circuit, nor will you hear the noises from pit lane or anything so it's quite surreal really to think that um you know this time last year uh everyone was kind of gearing up orchard road uh, which is one of singapore's most famous shopping uh belts um was filled with you know merchandise stands and yeah people just generally excited for the event uh, so actually we have to cross a bridge to get to the other side of the bay uh, where the golf course is located and uh, normally my route takes me through a bus depot uh, which is always busy and um, I really admire the bus drivers there. They're some of the hardest working people in Singapore. Undoubtedly one of the best parts of uh, this walk is actually um, seeing the sights of Singapore along the way. So as you can see in the, on my right, uh, we've got Marina Bay Sands and that whole Gardens by the Bay area. And I'm not sure if it's clear in the video, but up there on the far distance is actually where we're walking to. It's the Marina Bay uh, Public Golf Course along with the driving range. Across the bridge on the other side, well, the, these kind of buildings right here are, the, is the Bogus area um, and there's plenty of offices, a nice famous bar called At Atlas um, and then straight ahead here we have uh, Suntec City, plenty of good shopping, good restaurants and a, a very popular spot for um, you know, socializing. I know with my colleagues we go there quite often. So, so yeah definitely I think this is one of the um, unknown or untouched spots Singapore where you can get a very good view without having to pay for example uh, the hefty price of going to the top of the sky deck at Marina Bay Sands um, you can definitely kind of get a feel for the layout of Singapore you can definitely see di many many different parts and uh, it's very it's a very popular spot I must say for photographers for bikers even just to uh, pause rest their bikes take some photos and really capture some some nice shots. Um, as for the golf course itself, I think it's uh, it's, a, it's actually under lease. So that lease uh, from the government expires in a couple of years time. So what will happen is um, the golf course land will eventually be taken over by the government. And I understand it's going to be redeveloped into other amenities, including residential housing, perhaps shopping, um, a new museum to commemorate, commemorate the founders of Singapore uh, will be built in this area. So I guess um, uh, for the here and now, it, it's important to uh, kind of take advantage of 
the, the actual golf course, which is a, a really nice course in itself, and also the driving range. Uh, so I'll show you around in a little bit. You know, one thing I do appreciate coming from Australia is that um, how, how Singapore has preserved much of the greenery. Uh, there's a lot of open green spaces with a lot of trees, a lot of shrubs, flowers, etc. Um, and they've tried to re really kind of create many small gardens uh, in a what is a really tiny space of, of, for the country. Um, so even on my right, look how much green, greenery there is. It's really truly fantastic and I hope um, yeah, that they will preserve this for many many years to come, many many generations to come. Uh, it would be a shame to, to lose this. And as you can see, we've just arrived. So that was good, it only took about 20 minutes to walk across the bridge. It's a little bit of a walk into uh, to get to the clubhouse, but it's not too far. Super close to the city. I think it's, yeah, it'll be a sad sight to see once this all goes. Wow, so many cars, it's such a popular activity on a weekday evening especially uh, given COVID measures it's become even more popular than I remember um, usually I'd have to wait in a queue for about five minutes ten minutes even or, or longer just to um, wait for a bay to, to free up I think that's the case this evening as well might be worth going to the um, restaurant or the cafe up top just to wait out a little bit and let the Cues die down. Oh, Heineken's fine. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so I decided to come to the cafe just to wait out a little bit. The queues were a little bit uh, too long for my liking. Um, anyway, it's kind of nice to just after the walk, after a long day, just to get a, a, a beer in and uh, kind of settle, settle down and relax a little bit. Anyway, I thought it might be good to just um, have a look around what's on this level. It's a cafe, um, you know, serving drinks kind of Western food and Japanese, I think. Um, and it's got a fantastic location, so I'll just take a walk around. One of the unique things about this golf course is that there is um, night golf, so right now they're just turning on the lights. They can play all the way until you know, probably 9 o'clock, 10 o'clock at night. Um, it's a very unique part of Singapore and definitely I've, a very unique experience. I've played probably twice or three times maybe uh, night golf. There is a little bit of an extra charge for the electricity um, pricing, but um, it's a fantastic experience and I can definitely see it's very, very well patronized tonight. is still um, pretty long so I thought I'd just quickly grab a quick dinner um, and this is the Penang Chao Kway Tiao. Uh, it's about nine dollars so pretty good value I just love the black kind of dark charcoal uh, taste smell uh, of, of kind of the Malaysian style Chao Kway Tiao. yeah so this is from obviously from the Chinese side of the menu there's obviously there's Japanese food there's also uh, Western options as well. The table behind me is having steak so um, yeah plenty of options. Time now is 8 o'clock p.m. and uh, people are still being called to the first tee so uh, it's amazing how um, you know with floodlights night golf is such a, an incredible option to have in a city. I know back in Australia I don't think we have any kind of courses back home where I'm from so to have this right in the heart of the city uh, with Marina Bay Sands just right in the distance. Pretty darn amazing. Finally managed to get through the queue. Um, 
going to bay number 49.
And uh, one really good kind of feature for this driving range is it has kind of graphic um, display of your shots, similar to what the professional golf tours have, you know, with the shot tracer. So this is what it is. It's uh, Foresight Sports. As you can see, it kind of tracks your ball from the range all the way to the end. And two screens, one above, one below. This is a touch screen. That one's kind of more for visuals. So you hit your ball kind of within this area here. If it's a green light, that means it's, it's in a good position. So right now it's teed up for a driver swing. Um, so you go hit, ahead and hit it. It'll tell you kind of all useful bits of information. We've got 46 minutes left. Yeah, so um, it tells you your ball speed, launch angle, push or pull, backspin, side spin, carry, total distance, offline, to target. So all very useful. Yeah, so I'll just go hit a wedge and then I'll try and hit a driver. Um, and you can see the differences in distance. So it was 141 kilometer ball speed, carried 99 meters, which is, this is a 50 degree, yep, and that's typical, what I expect. Try and hit driver now. My best, but 236 meters. I'll try another one. That's much better. Yeah, 248 meters, almost to the back of the net. And uh, pretty, pretty straight. So um, yeah, I'll just keep practicing with this machine. I think it's really good. Um, back home in Australia, um, definitely, it's very rare to have one of these. And I think you just have to visit a professional kind of golf setup just to get kind of these um, machines and um, to, to track your distances. But here, every bay has it. So I'll just uh, keep practicing and um, hopefully we'll have a good remainder of the session.
just finished the um, proposition. You can see still plenty of people around, it's already 10 o'clock. So uh, I'm just going to pack up and head home on the bus. Cheers, thank you.